And our first order of business is to approve the minutes from May 19th and 31st. And I'm gonna call on our Vice Chairman, Trey Gooch. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I've reviewed those minutes and find everything to be in order. My motion is to approve. For a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion approved. Next up is uh, our friend, Mr. Beatty, with the investment report. Thank you, Commissioner. Good evening. Uh, not a lot, except rates are rising uh, fairly significantly as a percentage, greatly. Uh, <laughs> But uh, our, our bank rate was 60 basis points, and the LGIP rate for last month was 68 basis points. And that will, uh, I believe, continue to increase substantial, you know, several uh, multiple basis points every month going forward. Anything else on the report, Mr. Beatty? No, sir. Yeah, you've heard the report. Uh, I'll entertain motion a motion. Motion to approve. Commissioner Johnson. Second. Has a motion and a second. Commissioner Piercy, any questions? Hear none, call roll, please. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. And also, this next one is also Mr. Beatty. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, and and I, I'd always like to be brief, but this is pretty important. Uh, some changes to our investment policy. We're pretty restricted as to what we can invest in by state law, and this policy is more restrictive uh, than state law, and, and I think rightly so. Uh, but some, some changes to our previous policy. Uh, one of those is procedurally. We have been able in our policy to invest in uh, U.S. government treasury notes, T-bills and T-notes, uh, and also in government agency uh, instruments. But our policy required anything not in LGIP or the banking relationship had to be bid over a several day period of time. Well, very of often agencies and treasury opportunities will pop up this morning and they're gone by nine o'clock. Yeah, yesterday, for instance, there was an agency issue that for a one year maturity paid 2.54%. Well, by the time you say we're gonna bid this and bid it one day next week, they're all gone and, and you, you might get something else. So what this does is for those traditional things, the CDs, the CDRs, the insurance account, the things we do with banks, we will continue to bid those as we have always done. But it gives us the opportunity when these other instruments arise that we can act immediately to invest in those. We could, we could already invest, but it's just a matter of the timing didn't work. So that, that would be uh, one change. This one also allows us, and I don't know how often we do this, it's part of the, uh, uh, the state law analysis, it would allow us to invest in bonds from the state of Tennessee. Tennessee uh, debt issue. Uh, it would also allow us, and this is really the more significant thing for us, to invest in our own bonds. When we issue bonds, uh, we, we've done that kind of almost annually for most of the time I've been here. Uh, we will do that over 20 years, but when that goes to the market, it actually, you can actually buy the one year bond or the two year bond. We couldn't buy the 20 year, but Prior to this change, we couldn't even buy our own debt, which often was paying more, we were paying more in interest than we were receiving. So this would allow us, when that comes in, we couldn't finance our own debt, but when that's sold by those folks who, who buy that and market it, we would actually be able in the short term to buy our own debt. And so those are the, uh, that's kind of the overview of the, of the changes to the policy that I think uh, makes sense for us. Mr. Buddy, do you need us to make a recommendation from this committee to take to the full commission, or is this something you are able to do without it? No, sir, it needs the approval of, of this committee to approve the policy. Please, okay, I want to make sure on that. Yes, sir. Come in. Mayor. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have discussed this with our trustee, and, and um, you know, I, I totally support uh, it, this comes down to 
issue of trust, and of course he's elected and we trust him. Um, but things are not the way that they used to be, as he just explained. You know, when Mr. Peniel was, was in that position, he'd walk down to Mercer Bank and Trust and hurry to make a phone call. And things didn't change as rapidly. Um, Mr. Beatty needs the authority to be able to pivot quickly within whatever pops up on the screen and be able to monitor that um, by as fast as things are moving in the financial world in order to uh, capture those best rates. He can't wait till next week. So I do support his request tonight. Mr. Johnson. So basically this sentence here says, the standard of prudence to be applied shall be the prudent rule. So th this basically giving you more leeway, is that correct? But, and that's actually always been there. What, and again, I'll, I'll take as much time as y'all want to take. What we're always doing is our first priority is to protect principal. I mean, that's, that's priority one. The second priority is to make sure that the money is available when we need it. Because this is not long-term investment money. It's money that we, we, we know we're going to use, but we've got it for a period of time. So that's the second priority. And then the third priority is return. But that only comes, and then the deal is we're, we're not speculating on something that gives us the highest amount of return, but we're saying let's invest in what the market is giving us. Today, and it's not always true, that the treasuries and agencies, again, are paying significantly more because the banks at this point have cash and they don't really need our money. Plus, they have to collateralize our money, so they have to set instruments aside to collateralize our money. So not only are they paying interest, but they also have this other instrument there that's our collateral. So all of that, so today, and that could change next month, six months from now, the agencies and treasuries might not provide the best income. But if we were investing, investing today, that would by far uh, it's, it's way in a way a better investment than we're getting because at this point you'll notice I don't hardly ever bring a CD bid because we're, we're not, we, we put it out like we have and, and we get a, almost no response. And if we do, and I'm not upset at anybody, it's just there, there's no appetite, there's no appetite for the money. There's no need from the financial institutions for our money. Okay, is there any more questions for our trustee. If not, I'll entertain a motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion to accept this proposal. Second. And a second. Any discussion? Hear none. Call roll, please. Mr. Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Beatty. Thank you very yes. much. Many thank you. Okay, I'm going to ask the committee to indulge me. I've invited Chairman Cush from Public Works to come speak to us for a moment uh, on uh, discussing the cost of waste disposal. And if you would, Michael, uh, please come up. It's my pleasure. Welcome. Greetings, everybody. Mike Cush. Commissioner of District 7 and Chairman of Public Works Committee. Uh, I sent out a spreadsheet yesterday uh, with a little bit of information. I have more and also uh, that spreadsheet needs some explanation. Uh, the reason I'm here uh, uh, and the reason I was invited by uh, Chairman P, uh, Chairman P also sits on the Public Works Committee, so this goes hand in hand. Uh, we uh, uh, received a, a letter from BFI uh, Republic uh, stating an opinion that we are in breach of contract with uh, Republic Services. Uh, we disagree with that uh, opinion, uh, but uh, there could be a point down the road. Um, don't know a time frame, but if they chose, they could also be, in my opinion, in breach of contract by deciding not to accept our trash. Uh, if that were the case, uh, we have put together some numbers uh, to put a Band-Aid on that particular um, dilemma that would uh, uh, get us to a point where we could have our trash uh, MSW delivered 
um, outside of the county. There are m multiple places where that can be taken. There are multiple people that have said they could help us. Uh, and that has a range of tipping fees and transportation costs aligned with that. And that's why you see the large uh, range of numbers. Uh, if there was a negotiation or a contract uh, redo with Republic, if you look at the TDEC website, they happen to have the highest tipping fees in the state nearly, at least on the east side of the state, at $99 a ton. Uh, so we would be paying the highest tipping fees if we rene renegotiated a deal with Republic if they stayed with those current prices. So I'm gonna give one more uh, piece of information then we're gonna talk about uh, why I'm here with some, some numbers that are not on that spreadsheet. Uh, we have, we, the Public Works Committee, have diligently reviewed a variety of technologies, uh, interviewed and uh, discussed and deliberated. Um, there is still no perfect silver bullet. The end result will ultimately be a combination of technologies, but uh, I can tell you that whether we partner in a P3, which is a public-private um, situation, whether we partner with the city, whether we go this on our own, no matter how I divide the numbers up, and I, I, this committee has warned the public that when we break from Republic, Free trash is no longer going to be free. We have, we have said that from the mountaintop for years now. No matter how I slice that onion, and no matter how we partner or who we partner with, it's going to wind up being a, between a twenty and thirty dollar a month household fee. No matter how you slice it, that's what we can expect. But. For budgeting purposes tonight, and for Chairman P, if we were to hit DEPTHCON 4 with Republic and they said, we're not taking your trash any longer, we have a concrete slab at our pavement. pavement. We have, I'm sorry, we have pavement where TDEC, we believe, would give us an emergency uh, authorization to lay down trash for a temporary. Um, Band-Aid, we would have to cover that with a roof, and I believe we talked about $150,000 to do that, so keep that number in mind, $150,000. We would somehow have to get that trash then onto um, uh, tractor trailers with a company or companies that have agreed to help us. That means we're going to have to have equipment on that pavement and some people there to do that. Uh, that equipment, I, I based a bulldozer, an excavator, and a compactor. That's going to cost, those three items together will cost $60,000 a month to have those three pieces of equipment on site. Bulldozer can't be used, rubber tired loader is about all we'll have to have. Okay, all right. So I've been told. All right, thank you. Um, so that $50,000 a month is what we would need to budget for equipment for however many months it's going to take for us to partner, decide where we're going to go technology wise, and uh, be prepared. Now, again, the cost of hauling tipping fees and transportation, we're gonna, we can pass that on to the households at about $25 a month, let's say as an average. But our costs, our expenditures are gonna be in the immediate for a, a roof to cover the pavement um, and the equipment to compact and, if it's not already compacted, compact and load those vehicles for them to take to a uh, landfill. Now, 
uh, I have got a, you, you may wonder where all these tipping fees and transportation numbers come from. They come from many sources, reliable sources. Uh, they range anywhere from $60 a ton for tipping fees to $100 a ton for tipping fees. And freight is a moving target, as you know, because fuel is a moving target. To get anything freighted anywhere, whether you're hauling grain or, you know, TVs, it's hard to find drivers to do, to get anything anywhere. Just look at the ports on any coast. It's hard to get equipment or goods anywhere across the U.S. Uh, transportation is roughly $40 a ton. But right now, there are people willing to haul for us at about $63 per ton. That includes tipping fees and transportation. That's probably as good a deal as we'll ever find. Because one reliable source who also fed me some of these numbers have said that Mike, as some of these annual contracts that some of these big companies have with cities and counties expire, they will be incurring a 20 to 30 percent increase on their next year's contracts. So cheap tipping fees are going away and cheap transportation is already going away. So if something happened this quarter, if something happened quarter three, we could, for 65 bucks a ton, we could be moving trash outside this county. Um, but that's as good as it's gonna get. It could go up to 100 by the time we're, if, if, if Republic's thing gets f further delayed and we can't work out an agreement, uh, or choose not to work out an agreement, uh, that could go up to $100 very, very easily. So for the immediate future, we gotta think about 50,000 a month for equipment, and we gotta think about $150,000 expenditure for a roof that will cover the pavement because TDEC will demand that we, what trash will lay on that pavement for a short period of time every day has to be covered and out of the weather. So, Mr. P, do you have any questions? Have you got a total figure, say, for a yearly cost, just ballpark? I know you got a range on a couple of things there. Who's got a calculator? 50 times 12 is what, 60, that'd be 600,000, $750,000 with the roof? Does that sound about right? I'm not good at math, but th those are pretty easy numbers. Does that sound right? Three quarters of a million dollars? Use your mic, please. For just for that, and that's, that's just for the equipment and the roof. No, no. Oh, it was, it was 2.1 oh. for transportation and tipping only yeah. for a year's time on the low side, on yes. the low side of your numbers. Okay, if, 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 if that's the question you're ask, asking, Chairman P, if you've got anybody that's got a calculator, take $65 times uh, 52,000 tons, because that's about our annual county tonnage. I'm sorry, Lisa? 3,380,000. 3,380,000, yeah. But again, I would, I would think that that number is what we pa pass on to the households as a, that is the service. Picking up trash and disposing of trash is a service which should be paid for like any other service. Well, the, the, as he stated, the reason I've asked him to come is because worst case scenario, you know, we could possibly have to pick up some of these and we wanna make sure we've got this in our budget or at least we have funds to cover this in worst case scenario. Uh, the Public Works Committee is diligently working on it. There's three of us, four of us standing here, they're on that committee. Uh, there are a lot of different options out there. A lot of them are, are very good. But uh, as Chairman Cush mentioned, you know, uh, tipping, free tipping is going away. And we've got to come up with alternatives, but it wouldn't be pertinent, well, it wouldn't be prudent for us not to look at this since we're closing our budget out at the end of this month, hopefully, and not prepare 
just in case. So having said that, I've talked to Lisa and we do have grant monies that are available that we could use and I want this budget committee to keep that in mind. I don't want to divert those funds that could be used for this purpose for other uses without us being aware of what, what we're spending. And, uh, Lisa, you want to mention where we could actually come up with some of these funds? We don't have it yet, but we are expecting it. And that's the second tranche of the ARPA money. And if you remember us talking about the uh, revenue loss um, calculations that we made, and we came up with it, and we said that we are going to use the, you know, 23 money, million, and I was able to give you the expenses that went with it, long story short, to move that into the general fund so that at the end you could turn around and move that to solid waste if it needs it. Okay. Uh, last thing I want to say is, uh, again, that, that 52,000 tons is also worst case scenario. That's considering a zero diversion rate and for those who think, what are you talking about? That means uh, we are not taking into account any recycling or any uh, recapturing of usable materials that we can uh, sell back on the open recyclable market. So uh, that tonnage would go down as we uh, 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 recycle more, which is certainly our intent. And we would hate to charge uh, households a fee without getting something for them in return. And getting something in return would be a, uh, a, uh, a vibrant recycling program and taking that kind of waste out of the stream and, and repurposing. And we, we've looked at quite a few different things, but most of them you can figure about at least an 80 percent uh, diversion and 20 percent that would still have to be landfill and on most of the major uh, recycling or waste of energy or you know some of the different projects we've looked at that's kind of an average so of that 52,000 of the county's waste 80 percent of that could be recycled reused or turned into energy so like I said there are different things we're looking at so that tonnage initially would be all of that but if we go to one of these other projects uh, as Chairman Cush mentioned where it could be a PP3 uh, type project or or otherwise something we do on our own so that will change but this is to take up the slack in case we do have that problem coming up next year but Michael I'm gonna cut you short I kind of push this in the meeting but unless you've got anything else you want to pass on to us I appreciate you coming by and uh, I would just like to, to for all you just so you know uh, Commissioner Dodd and Commissioner Piercy and Commissioner P are also on the Public Works Committee. Um, give them a hug. It's, it's a tough job. <laughs> See y'all. Yeah, does the committee have any questions for Michael before he runs off? What was the total number that at, at the end that Lisa, Lisa gave three million? No, no, that, that, three, eight, you, three, that, I think. that you think we need. Oh, $750,000, which was 50,000, 50, 50, 60, I, I think I did it in my head, $65 a ton times 50,000. Yeah, that was, that was that 3,380,000. Okay, so what math did I do just a minute ago? Oh yeah, the roof, the roof and the $50,000 a month equipment. So 50 times 12 600, is 60, 000. yeah, 600,000 plus the roof is 150 is three quarters of a million dollars. $750,000. Yes, yeah, thank you, Paul, for reminding me. That was it, if the math is right. Uh, yeah, I mean, are you asking for that to be in next year's budget? Is that I'm, I'm saying if we hit depth con four with Republic, we're going to have to cough up that money right away to start putting trash on a vendor's trailer and getting it outside of Rutherford right. County. I, I mean, I would think that there's probably line items that are, you know, if it happened soon and before August that we return, that there are lines that we could probably use until we got back together and amend it. 
Uh, I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, Mike, did you say that there'd probably be a $20 fee? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah you'd like the, you know, the city, the city charges a monthly solid waste fee for, for uh, curbside pickup. Uh, it's, it's, I believe, like seven and a half dollars right now. They're getting ready to go to fourteen fifty in two years, and then in another two years, they're going to be at twenty two something. Um, the city has said uh, the the magic break, and this is a break even number. That they're not trying to make money. Their break even number is about twenty five dollars. Um, for us to do what we need to do, that number to to break even right now like right now is in the $12 range. By the time we figure out of the technology where we want to be and what we want to do, whether it's energy or whatever that case may be, when that year comes, we can anticipate somewhere between a 20 and $30 a month household, household fee. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, but the figure of 155,000 households stands out in my mind. Is that somewhere in the right? There's 155,126 households that are, that we, the county alone would have to service. But remember, 46,000 of those are the city. The city are, are servicing those right now. But the city can opt out of the trash business anytime they want to. They don't, they're not forced by law to do so. The county is. So the city can bow out and say, hey, I'm done. So actually the county is responsible for all 156,126 households. So it's, it depends on how you cut up that pie. Um, in the end, the state sees we're responsible for the whole 156. Right now we're only responsible for 156,000 minus the 42, so whatever that change is, 112,000 households. Okay, so uh, basically 155,000 households Correct. at 20 bucks a piece it, would yeah, be, yeah. That'd be a little over $3 million. Yeah. Okay, our, for our operating funds. Yeah, our, okay, now then let me ask you this question. Uh, I live in the city, mm -hmm. okay, uh, would I pay the Twenty dollar tax plus the no, seven dollars and something, whatever I pay for the city. No, no, no. This would this com combined, whoever's whoever's charging it, whether it's the city county jointly charging a fee, or if it's the city bowing out and we try and collect everything, it's one fee and it's okay. ultimately going to be around twenty five bucks. Okay, thank twenty you. to thirty at the end of the day. And those are, those are hand grenade numbers. Commissioner Allen, and I, by the way, I want to remind everybody, I want to try to keep it as short as we can, but we've we got a lot more talk to do about it. Go ahead, please. None of these figures include the county getting in the collection business. Like curbside? Right. No. Okay. No. If you want to do that, you better add about 15 more dollars a household and buy a lot of equipment. Well, this is this just kind of make everybody aware again, but Michael, thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up is the fund condition report. We'll call on Ms. Lisa, please. Okay, I'll start with the um, development tax. In May, we collected between the two um, development tax school facilities tax four hundred ninety seven thousand nine hundred and forty four. Um, Last May, we collected 357,750 in development tax, brings our total for the year to 4,951,483 compared to the development tax last year for the same period, 5,661,750. I'll move to the cash balance report. At the end of May, we had 456,498,000 dollars in um, total funds, operating of that is 409,330,000. Borrowed funds, 
Just t uh, two items of note of this um, mark when he gives you that. I don't know if y'all ever look at these little bars on the side, but that tells you which which ones go down and which ones go up compared to the last year on cash. When you look at our cash balance in the general fund, it shows that we're about um, three million short. And I just remind you that we had a lot of monies come in last year for the emergency rental assistance, which is running in through the general fund, and we're that down. And then in solid waste, we had transferred I mean, um, six million dollars this year for the construction of four our remodel of four sites. So when you look at that, I guess that, that may have been why that those are, are down. I'm not going to go over the revenue review primarily because we did that on our June 2nd meeting when we adjusted all the revenues. So the numbers reflected on our revenue review just reflect exactly what it looked like at the end of May prior to making any adjustments. So you can see all the, all the um, positive numbers, the 100 percent that, um, that we've achieved at the end of uh, May. Okay, are there any questions for Lisa on the report? If none, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. I have a motion second. and a second. Any discussion? Hear none. Call roll, please. Mr. Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Pearson? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Risk management and financial report. Ed? Welcome, sir. Good evening. So in the 264 fund, you'll see for the month of May, revenue is $9,074,411. Expenditures, $7,287,696. Revenue less expenditures, a positive $1,786,715. For the 2021 calendar year, your totals, You'll see in revenue is $41,892,179. Expenditures, $33,606,095. Revenue less expenditures, eight million, a positive $8,286,084. And then for the uh, fiscal year, 2021-2022, your total at the bottom, revenue $79,070,714, expenses $77,091,001, with a revenue less expenditures, a positive $1,979,713. In the 266 fund, for the month of May, you'll see workers' comp, $2,149.74, OJI, $89,833.14, year to date, well, I'm sorry, and your total for the month of May is $91,982.88. Year to date is six, for workers' comp is $60,787.56. OJI is $509,903.87. For a total, $570,691.43. The legal expense for the month of May you will see that the total is $52,872.06 uh, compared to last year at $26,166.87. And that's my report, Mr. Chairman. Heard the report, any, any questions for Ed? Motion to approve. Have a motion. Second. And a second. 
Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, if you'd like, I can ask Mr. Patterson, our broker, to come up here or just go through the recommendations of the insurance committee, whatever the wishes of the committee is. Please have him come forward if okay. we need to. Uh, let's see, do I hear a motion to suspend the rules to allow him to speak? I have a motion and I'm taking that too as a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? You may speak. Did you add the cyber to this? The new cyber? No. Okay, got it. So in working with Ed and the risk management department and the insurance, oh, I'm sorry, and the insurance committee, is that good there? Um, we got everything really pretty well squared away. The outstanding piece from the last insurance committee meeting was the cyber liability, which I literally got done today. Um, and we can review that as well. So, so what the recommendation of the insurance committee was, was to renew the property with Liberty Mutual and that annual premium, if I did the right math, yeah, is one twenty one million one hundred twenty one thousand nine eighty nine, and that does not include TRIA, which we discussed. So TRIA is um, the Federal Terrorism Insurance Program. Since nine eleven, there's been no uh, certified acts of terrorism by the federal government. So spending money on TRIA is kind of a kind of a waste of money. On the on the crime. Um, there was a decision made by the insurance committee to kind of move away from bonding all the individual um, uh, individuals that needed to be bonded in the county other than the trustee. We can cover all of those folks with one crime policy, excluding the trustee, for $5,642. And I th think Susan came up with a number. What was the premium on the, all those bonds? Roughly about the same, wasn't it? It was about the same, but it's only Oh, but it's only 100000 on the them, and we've got a half a million dollars um, crime coverage with the travelers. Um, additionally, this is, this is coverage. You don't have to, like, cover every trustee. If somebody leaves one of those positions, then you have to continue that bond until all anything shakes out that might have happened. Um, the crime coverage is going to be not position-specific, spe position not individual-specific like the bond is. On the casualty, um, they elected to make a change. We've been with um, Ambridge, Britt, for a number of years, I think nine or 10 years. I think that relationship has soured a little bit over the last couple of years. Um, and I was able to secure a quote with Princeton um, that was pretty competitive. So on the second page, if you see that, the renewal with Ambridge, Britt was 1,494,000 and with um, Princeton, it's $1,380,000 in a little change. Um, the significant difference is that um, under the Princeton program, the SIR, the self-insured retention, the part of the claim that the county pays is a half a million dollars per claim. Under the Ambridge program, is $350,000 per claim. So we're saving roughly $130,000, $40,000 a year, but we're risking uh, roughly $150,000 per claim. So I did an analysis um, of what the claims would look like over the past 10 years. And average claims over the past 10 years um, have, that would be in that corridor between 350000 and 500000 is only $52,000. So historically, if we'd have had a higher SIR, we would have made money or would have saved, would have saved money. Um, does that mean we can't have two bad claims and it ends up costing more money? It could happen, but historically, based on what's happened, um, I think it's a reasonable bet, and that's what the insurance committee elected to do. Okay, so the cyber piece, um, I just got this today. Uh, Cowbell is not only the best quote I could get, it was the only quote I could get. So cyber liability, as you all know, you see the reports on the news every day somebody has gotten hacked. Um, so insurers are reeling from the claims. So rates are going up, premiums on average are up 70%. There's a lot of my clients that are seeing 100% rate increases. Um, we got roughly 
about a 50% rate increase, maybe a little shy of 50% rate increase, which in the grand scheme of things isn't that bad. Um, the significant difference, and I highlighted it on the exhibit, is that they reduced our ransomware event coverage from a million dollars to $100,000. Um, working with IT, there's a couple of things that they need to get squared away security-wise, um, nothing big, but stuff that has to get done. Um, we can get that ransomware limit, sublimit removed and go back to a million dollar limit and there won't be any additional premium to do that. Did I, did I miss anything? So that's got it covered on the nothing changes. Changed. Yeah. So the only real changes is we're going to kind of get away from bonding individuals and go with a blanket crime policy to cover all those. We're changing casualty carriers from Ambridge to Princeton, um, and the cyber liability went up a bunch, which isn't a isn't earth shattering. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Go ahead, please. Um, on we, on insurance committee, we didn't get a chance to discuss the cyber because we knew that was going to be the outstanding piece, and we did talk about you know was our IT department doing everything that they needed to do in order to meet whatever their criteria was. So where's the accountability piece? How do, where's the monitoring piece to make sure that that piece gets done and that coverage gets increased? Uh, so, I mean, I've been working with Cody and IT closely for, golly, what, four months. Um, so that, I, I don't know the timeline. I'm not privy to that information, but I know he is definitely working on all of these things that have to be done. I don't know if somebody else could probably answer that question better than me. Make sure we have an amendment at the very end under other business that deals with Okay. So, Ed, is that something that you'll just stay on top of and make sure that that happens? Because the, the premium is only, the premium won't change, but the coverage will go up. Correct. So the premium is solid. And then it can, we can increase that ransomware event coverage as soon as we cross a couple T's and dot and I. Yes, and to kind of bring the committee up to speed, um, it's not only Rutherford County General, it's also the schools, it's also the Sheriff's Department, it's also uh, uh, Register of Deeds Office, uh, and we've had a couple of meetings, Mayor Ketron pulled together uh, after we had the application come in, and we like, okay, we've got to go out to everybody, get this out there, and I think part of, uh, the, the issue is, without telling the robber how to rob the bank, <laughs> part of the issue is equipment, trying to get it, you know, some of it has been ordered, and it's just trying to get it here and get it installed, and then, a, again, uh, it's massive. I mean, when you're talking about the schools, county general, and everybody else, it's the application you a year ago and two years ago, uh, I think, uh, sitting down with Mayor Ketron, we talked about we didn't have cyber liability three years ago. And it has been evolving every since, and you can understand because they're taking big hits. So, um, and what their application requires is constantly changing because they're, they're trying to limit their exposure. So to answer your question, yes, uh, we are, been in contact trying to get these changes made uh, and we're going to continue to work with those four uh, bodies and trying to get that restriction taken off and back up to a million and like I said Mayor Ketron was in the meet one of the meetings with us and everybody just said hey we're all on the same page here several months ago trying to get that we were hoping we would get there by by July 1 but because of delays and some stuff and some budgetary things uh, we just don't feel like we're gonna be there by July 1. This is just one of those items that we look at once a year, and my concern is I don't want it to fall off anybody's radar and we don't pay attention to it. <laughs> so I just wanna make sure somebody has taken responsibility and, and is, being, is gonna be holding all of us accountable to make sure that that piece happens. Uh, I can sure it's on our radar for sure because we see stuff all the time about, uh, about that. And we'll do our best, I promise you. All the other rates are in line with what we discussed at entrance committee, so I'll make a motion that we approve as presented. I have a motion to approve as presented. Do I hear a second? And a second. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, call roll, please. Mr. Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? 
Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Pearson? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes, motion carries. Okay, we're good. And then the last item we have is the insurance rates. Uh, keep, uh, just so you know, the schools went to the state, voted to go to the state plan. Uh, here's the rate increase for the county general employees. It also includes uh, E911, E911, community care, and Smyrna Airport Authority. Uh, you will see in the rate chart based on the increase is 11%. Uh, compared to last year's and then the dental plan is zero percent increase and the vision plan also a zero percent increase and I am requesting that these uh, rates be adopted um, the uh, and Commissioner Allen you, you speak up if you'd like to but we we discussed also in the next six months uh, looking at uh, trying to find a way, you know, what's best? If we want to go to the state, if the county general wants to go to the state, if, um, and how it's not only going to affect the rates, but the eligibility for the state is different for retirement. So, you know, you're looking at your retirement liability and those numbers, and that I think that's something we definitely need to study is not only the, the today's rates, but the long-term effect that it's going to have on the county's uh, commitment to post 60, uh, well, to, the, to retirement. So that's what our, the request from the insurance committee was to uh, adopt these rates. And that's what uh, the recommendation is. I'll make a motion to approve as presented. I have a motion. And a second. Uh, what was the percentage again on the medical ed that increased? 11%. Okay, and zero dental, zero. Zero dental, do, zero on vision, yes sir. Any other questions from the committee, comments? Here none, call roll. Mr. Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes, motion carries. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good evening. We've got one item. I got one more. Oh. Uh, stop loss. Oh, I'm sorry. Included in that, I'm sorry, included on that 11% uh, is the stop loss. Anyway, that's the quote we have from Signum stop loss, renewal. And I would need approval for that. I meant to put that in with the motion on the rates, because that's included in the rates. So we basically have already voted on that. It, so what yes, you're saying? It's already in okay, the rates. that was yes, included. Sir. Mark just said to the minutes that the stop loss was in. Uh, I have to look back up that line on what we just voted on. Okay. That good with our motion and second. <laughs> <laughs> is it, it right? Is that okay with the motion and the second? Yes. If it is, then our, our vote's good. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Ed. Okay, thank you. All right, next is the uh, application for the BJA grant for the recovery court. And I think Lisa's gonna do yes, this. Yes, sir, right. yes, sir. Um, this is a request to apply for this grant. It's a three-year grant total amount is $900,000 and it would not, I, I don't believe is a match required. This is reoccurring too. Is well, it? no, it's, it's a new grant. Is, and you say, what it's was the match a, again? Or no match? No, it's 900,000 over three years, over a three year period, yep, no match is required. Um, this is it's improving reentry education and employment outcomes grant for the recovery court partnering partnering with the correctional work center this is just a request to apply yes sir purpose of the grant is to enhance correction systems ability to implement and expand education and employment programs that serve individuals during incarceration and throughout their period of reentry into the community 
Okay, you've heard the request and there is a match. No match. No match. No match. Sorry. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, a motion to approve. Second. And second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, call roll. Commissioner Stevens? Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Pearson? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes, motion carries. Okay, next is the 2022 Edward Byrne JAG grant application and MOU with the city of Murfreesboro. Lisa, I think you're doing that one too. No, Mr. Spence, thank you. Good evening. We're requesting authorization to apply for the JAG 22 grant with Murfreesboro Police Department when it's announced and we're requesting the mayor to be able to accept and sign the MOU with Murfreesboro City. We um, usually receive between $28,000 and $34,000 each for each agency. Now this is a recurring grant. <laughs> yes, sir. Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Second. And second, Mr. Dodd. Any questions for Mr. Spence or comments? Hear none, call roll, please. Commissioner Stevens? Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Pish? Yes. Motion Mr. carries. <laughs> I didn't hear you. <laughs> I knew you'd call my name. Okay, so we had all yeses across yes, there. Motion carries. All right. Uh, I guess you can continue with the next one, Mr. Okay, thank Spence, you, sir. if you're doing that one. Yes, sir. We're requesting permission to apply for a mental health transport, humane transport for patients grant. The grant is not matching. We have mayor med transporting our in, um, patients right now, and this is gonna pay for their transport, uh, not insured uh, patients. Last year, they transported 1,551 patients to various facilities. So you've heard the request there. We saw this in public safety and it was approved, uh, I think unanimously there. Um, Chairman, this wouldn't, I got permission from uh, Chairman Reed to present this. This didn't come from public safety, I'm sorry. All right. So basically what you ask for, there's no matching funds. So it'll be 100% funded whatever you ask for, correct? Correct. And right now we're just asked permission to apply. Right. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Second, any further questions or comments? Uh, since we're just applying, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We have two amendments we'd like to ask for. The first one is to move 40,000 from the salaries in the detention and place it into the overtime in the detention to cover um, employees working for the, the covering of shifts. Can we hear them together, Chairman? Can we hear both together? Yes, let's go ahead and continue for the next one too. Okay, Mr. The, the next amendment is uh, moving $40,000 out of the food inmates line item and placing into the gasoline line item. Okay, so you've heard both requests. Uh, are there any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion for these transfers. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Two seconds. Any questions or discussion on these two items? Hearing none, call roll. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Pearson? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. And last time you were here was captain, and then you were actually major, so it's actually deputy chief now. It's always right? going to be Steve. Okay, yes, there you yes, go. Yes, yes, sir. I just but want to make sure we're right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, next item 12 was withdrawn. Item 13, Sasquatchy County Agreement for Juvenile Detention. Is Leon here? All right. Welcome, Mr. Caesar. Good evening, everybody. 
Unfortunately, Director Duke could not be here today, so I'll be presenting an opportunity for the county. Um, Sequatchie County have reached out to us and requested to have a contract with the Rutherford County Juvenile Detention Center for detention bed services at a daily rate of $175. Um, we currently contract with 40 uh, different agencies throughout the state of Tennessee. And this, this would just be an addition to the agencies, the 40 different agencies we provide bed services for. Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve and a second. This is something we've seen quite often in the past. Any questions for Leon? Hearing none, call roll. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Pierce? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next up is item 14, general fund budget transfer for the circuit court clerk. See Ms. Harrell on her way up here, so. Good evening, I'm just uh, wanting to do an amendment from our other charges to our processing equipment. It's 12,000 for computers, telephones, and scanners, and monitors, and laptops. An amendment. So you've heard her request, she's a asking to move 12,000 from other charges into data processing equipment. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Call roll, please. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes, motion carries. Thank you, ma'am. Item 15, general fund budget amendment for reappraisal. That's, Mitchell me. Here, that's or me. You're gonna do that? Okay. That's, a, that's another cleanup uh, on the employee health insurance and that's moving 9,000 from the assessor budget to the reappraisal budget. Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? And a second. Any questions for Lisa on this? Not call roll, please. Mr. Stevens? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Dodd? Yes. Mr. Gooch? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. P? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, next up is the uh, 16 application for TDEC ARPA grant on behalf of Consolidated Utility District. I'll take that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, the ARPA grants that came from the federal government back during COVID went in many different directions. And, and of course, uh, TDEC, um, Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation was a recipient of a large amount and they um, divided that up into cities and counties. Um, first it was all in one and the cities didn't like it. So they went back and before the General Assembly adjourned and, and got uh, the cities to get their own. They didn't want the county telling the city has, how much they were gonna get out of the amount that was allocated for, for the county. So we received our uh, amount that we were gonna receive in for Rutherford County. I first approached uh, Greg Brooks and Mike Hughes to see if Either one of those would be, um, either one of them could, could use the money. We first looked uh, with Greg Brooks, possibility of using some of that ARPA uh, grant money to repair or improve two or three of the bridges that we have that constantly flood. Well, after further review, um, it's not eligible uh, for fixing bridges. Talked to Mike Hughes about stormwater, uh, it was not eligible. So the only other place that we had, and since we do not have a actual water department, 
I approached uh, uh, Roger Goodson with CUD, and of course they were standing there ready for uh, and anxious and willing to help um, take our money. So we would be the conduit of which these ARPA funds would flow through through this agreement. Uh, I had uh, been contacted also back during the spring uh, from two of our members of the House of Representatives that we had out near 840 going towards the Speedway. We still have some folks, and not just there, but in particular this one area that's out off of 840 on Mona Road. Um, they don't have good drinking water. There's no water lines from the county or from CUD. Their wells have all turned black and they have to use ultraviolet lights just to try to clean it and it's basically not cleanable. Um, so they're having to import water in. It would be very expensive, but they're gonna have to, in order to get the line to that area, they will have to drill under 840 to get the water lines to it. So you'll see right there in, in contract 519, the South Loop transmission main phase, it talks about um, uh, providing water lines to provide water transmission to areas in the county. So um, it's not just there. And here we are in 2022 and we still have areas in the county that uh, do not have adequate drinking water. So they've broken it up. The grant that comes to us, to Rutherford County, is, uh, uh, you see there, the five million five ninety seven. It does require a match, and CUD has uh, stepped up and said that they would make the match. You see there in front of you on your SharePoint. So that's all we're asking for here is uh, to allow us to enter into the agreement with CUD for those funds to flow through us to them so they can get water uh, to our citizens. Okay, you've heard the request. Do you have any questions for the mayor? I have one. Uh, yes, sir. And this money is just flowing through us. We, that's, that's all we're doing, correct? That's correct. So they've got linear feet estimated like on the PVC pipe on the inflated price that we have now and it comes up short, that'll be CUD's problem, not the county's, correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. I make the motion to approve it. Second. And a second. Any other questions or discussion? I'm gonna make mention, I, I did talk to Reba this afternoon. Uh, you, you mentioned the word agreement, but I think she said that a letter uh, might suffice, but I think Nick is still looking into that, so we'll just leave it as letter or agreement, one of the two. Whichever, not, whichever not, one. Not necessarily be an MOU in the motion. Is that okay with the motion and the second? I see nods, so, so. having said that, any other discussion? Call roll, please. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Piercy? Yes. Mr. P? Motion carries. Okay, next is uh, f item 17, funding for the Goldstein Building Design Phase. I think Lisa will probably be doing that one. Yes, um, and I, I, I kind of want to wrap up something in this as well. And this is, um, they were asking, it, what you've got on your report, I sent out to you earlier is the capital project report. And I think that the, uh, you wanna talk about it? Yeah, th this is a request from the PBA. Um, <clears throat> it was uh, the PBA uh, property management looked at this. Uh, they looked at uh, possibility of, of cause of space needs going to the city hall uh, area over the parking garage that we own that property. We got some estimates from Rock City. It was gonna run for a six story building there. Uh, it's gonna run about $11 million. And then Rock City, we also had them go in after um, we did a structural, we hired a structural engineer to first look at the Goldstein's building because we thought there, there might've been some, some uh, uh, structural issues, but the structural survey came back and said the bones are good 
in that building and property management sent it on to um, uh, maybe a public building authority. Public, public building authority did send it back to property management. Property management said then, okay, we need, uh, we need to go ahead and move forward because I think that that was where everybody uh, decided they wanted to um, uh, stay for increasing our space needs. Um, I think the next step would be to request uh, architectural and design fees and so the PBA can select and that's what's before you tonight is the engineering and architectural uh, design for it to go in and remodel um, the Goldstein's building for they estimated um, Trey do you remember didn't they say six million when I was still I I think it was six it was to eight. Six, yeah. Six to eight million. But we won't know that until they actually put it out to bid. But here's the first. This will be the first phase. And so what's before you tonight is to where we take the money from. And right. And I've, but I've got two other things in speaking with Nick. Okay. So they're asking for 291 for engineering. 291. And in doing this, and they're, they're wanting to get a contract between the county and the PBA accepting the project. They're just waiting on numbers, but on top of the 291, they're asking for $25,000 to, for the beginning part of the hiring the construction manager at risk, and then another 10,000 for legal fees. So in total, that's what the request is, is $326,000 uh, to start the project and give it to the PBA, right? That's correct. Okay, so. I think everybody was in agreement on property management that they wanted to keep the, the, the presence on the square, especially with the election office. Uh, that was their request, Mr. Farley. It is the number one voting box in the, in the county and uh, to keeping that presence. But I think that the bones are good. Got parking behind us, all that area from the uh, library all the way down is they've already released the engineering so all that's going to be torn down uh, I think the old police department is is proposal for a boutique hotel and WGNS on down all the way to the old city hall the water department will all be raised and um, uh, retail on the bottom floor top three floors will be all condominium and rental so on the capital report, if you go to page four of five, that's the uh, monies available as of the end of March, uh, May, sorry, May for the Gov 21, what we refer, refer to as the Gov 20. There's 266,315 available in that pot of money. And then in Gov 21, it's the last page, there's 154,894 available at the end of May. And if you look at these, the pro project estimates of what we, what you approved for each of these different projects, like in the Gov 21, a lot of these are coming in and we're not spending everything that what we had requested. The only other, the only one item that was over was the Paul's building improvement. It was uh, requested at forty thousand, but the the cost of it ended up being forty three thousand two hundred sixty seven. I believe that was the floor, the new flooring they put in. So, anyway, between those two projects, there is sufficient funds to cover the $326,000. Okay, you've heard the request and the discussion and where the funding would come from. Are there any other questions? I'll make a motion to approve, but I will have a comment if it's seconded. Second. I have a motion and a second discussion. We've had at property management, we've had uh, a local businessman or business partnership come and talk about buying the Goldstein's building. Uh, I just want to acknowledge that that's been on the public, that property management agenda. Um, 
but nobody has chosen to take any action. And frankly, I'm of the opinion, unless we have the building for sale, it's not on the block. So uh, is there any need to discuss that? Did anybody feel the need to? Mayor, do you have a comment? What? I'm not sure that he wanted to purchase, Commissioner. I think he wanted well, to swap. To correct. Uh, his, his swap, I think the committee chose that they didn't think it was a good swap because he owns three buildings where the Blue Porch Cafe is right across in the frame, what used to be the frame gallery. I don't, I'm not sure. It's a meeting room now right across from the new judicial building, the JUC, um, with no parking. Uh, he wanted to swap that for the Goldstein's building. And he said that he would allow the, um, he and his partner would allow the, the um, uh, election commission for a dollar a year uh, to stay there and in the building because they were going to turn it into retail. They were going to tear it down and build another building there. But, you know, there are 6,000 square feet versus our 33,000 square feet. And committee chose not to swap. Any other discussion or comments, Phil? Call for the question. I don't need to make that motion, excuse me. No, no other discussion. Can I just put in with Mark and as we do this, I would, I would spend the Gov 21 money first and then follow whatever's left with um, the Gov 20. Okay, can you make that part of your motion, Commissioner Dodd? Yes, that is part of my motion. And the second. Okay. So we do have a motion and a second. I hear no further discussion. Uh, call roll, please. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Item 18, purchase of property for the Las Casas ballpark entrance and parking. Cover that one for us. Well, this was basically, uh, I think, between me and Commissioner Piercy. This was um, when the architects um, and engineers were actually looking at the Las Casas location for our new public health and safety building. They felt that they needed to scoot it over because of the drive going back to the ballparks where they currently are. And um, so uh, I think they all met out there, Commissioner Piercy, um, Mr. Vault, Chairman of Public uh, uh, PBA, the architects, and, and I think one of the contractors maybe. Um, they all met out there and felt like that in order to make it flow good as far as the ambulance vehicles being able to come out uh, properly uh, to retain the old rock wall, which is very uh, nostalgic, for, uh, and they wanted to keep that for the, for the citizens out there. Uh, it's where some people got their first kiss, so it's, a, it's important, right? Um, but in order to make all that flow to get the traffic back to the to the um, ballparks, they needed to shift over away from the other building, and so the gentleman they approached the gentleman who owns the property, and he's willing. They need three acres um, adjacent to the current property that we own. Correct. And that would be at fifty thousand dollars an acre, I believe. And that correct. Correct. Commissioner Piercy, you may want to chime in on this and th I think that's the request before you tonight is to purchase that uh, to um, make everything flow in, in Las Casas. When we met out there with the architect and a designer and one of the one of the contractors and Mr. Vault from PBA we tried moving the building to one direction kind of caused a conflict on a neighbor it was kind of encroaching in his space that he would probably need in the future tried to move it back then it uh, filled up the uh, entrance to the ballpark but when they have their tournaments and all you know there's no limit to where you can park if you're going to watch little Johnny play ball you're going to park and go watch the ball game so we figured that was going to really cover up the new public safety building on tournament nights or even on a large practice night <clears throat> so we met with the owner of the property just adjacent 
to the rock wall on the east on the west side of the of our property he agreed to sell us the entrance into the ballpark and by doing that it kind of encroached <clears throat> on one of his building lots so he wanted to add enough to be three acres to square up his side to make his lot square the extra land is in the back <clears throat> which can be used for parking for the ball <clears throat> for the ballpark or possibly another ball field or a soccer field in the future ever how they want to use it <laughs> it will be their expense all we're wanting to do is buy the property and <clears throat> we can get a, a road built into their ballpark through part of the monies for the building that's already been approved because it's, it's about 150 feet what they'll need it'll be gravel maybe pavement and that'll be the extent of that we're, we're doing this trying to get this done for the investment for the community and so the kids will always have a designated entrance to their ballpark and we won't be tearing up the pavilion that's out front that was supposedly built maybe by eagle scout maybe part of the volunteer fire department people built it they've got a, a nice little walking trail there that the community and the fire department together i think has built that this will eliminate disturbing any of that as a native road into it i ask that you approve it i'm not going to make the motion because i don't think it would be fair but i ask that you approve it for us where did you say the funding was coming from or would recommend it miss nolan said I, I would recommend we use the reserve for capital projects out of the general fund and then put it into the mayor's budget 51 300 715 land amendment that's exactly what i thought exactly thank you you have heard the request of <laughs> I think a couple of these stations we've had to move the proposed buildings around I know we did at Kittrell for the same reason you know to leave room for the ballpark and have an entrance there so any other discussion questions if not I'll entertain a motion motion to approve as presented mr. chair a motion to approve second and a second any questions hearing none call roll please mr. Stevens Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? I'm going to sustain because it was my idea. Commissioner P? <laughs> yes. Motion carries. Okay, next up is item 19, funding for community care generations connected. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like perm permission to approach the well and in the meantime, I'd like to ask for um, to suspend the rules to allow Mr. Kevin uh, Krasinski to join me at the well and let me talk about this as um, chairman of uh, CCRC. Do I hear a motion to suspend the rules? I have a motion, second, and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Rules are suspended. Welcome. Hey, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, uh, let me first introduce Kevin Krasinski. Uh, I worked with Kevin for a number of years, well, I guess a total of eight, when I was in General Assembly. Um, Kevin uh, spent a lot of time in with both House members and Senate members. He was working for that period of time, eight years, uh, for the Comptroller's office. And um, so what we have before you tonight, as you can see on your SharePoint, this has been in the works for approximately three and a half years. Your board at CCRC, you can see the uh, conceptual design of Generations Connected, uh, the, the daycare facility at, at CCRC. And of course, you know, we own all the property. We own uh, CCRC and we contract with the United uh, United church homes uh, that's actually running it. For the first time last week, um, uh, CCRC actually went over $5 million in their ending fund balance. Uh, so from several years ago, Commissioner Johnson, when you served on that committee, it was teetering on, do we need to sell it? Or probably back at the end of uh, early 2000s, maybe late 1990s there was a 
concern about the nursing home, but it's doing very, very well uh, today. <clears throat> so the board wanted to look at our daycare facility that's out there, which has been in a, been housed right outside the, the north wing of um, uh, CCRC. It's in a double wide trailer. It's licensed for 30 kids and we are at capacity with a waiting line. Um, it continues to be profitable um, month after month when we, when we have our board meetings. The board made the decision they want to move forward in building a, an affordable daycare facility uh, for county employees' children. It wouldn't be open for uh, the outside, but so we, Ms. Stevenson's here, I asked her from an HR perspective to send a survey out uh, to all county employees. Uh, we got a response back of over 300 employees who said they would like to have the opportunity to maybe bring their children to this facility. Um, I did not realize how much daycare cost had escalated, but it's tremendous, um, almost to the point of, of um, people deciding it's a life-changing decision whether the wife stays home and takes care of the kids or whether they go back to work because they're basically working for free of what they're having to pay for daycare in some, some locations. So um, the board decided to move forward. We had three options to look at, either to approach the county commission to build it because we own the property, they own the building, everything else uh, out there and uh, estimated this facility would run about $4 million uh, to build. It would have a certified tornado shelter in one of the rooms, in the largest room, um, in order to keep the kids safe. And so the request would be to the Department of Health, a license up to 125 uh, uh, kids, and it would be the first 24-7 um, daycare facility in the state of Tennessee. We've checked all over the state and we don't, we can't find one that's in operation. And, and the thought behind it is we have a lot of our first responders who might need these facilities. Our Sheriff's Department who have three shifts, Fire and Rescue have three shifts, um, uh, EMS has three shifts. And I think that's why we got such a, a, a large response of having some place that they felt safe and on um, property that they trusted to take their kids. So we're looking at a $4 million loan. We had the option to, like I said, number one is for the county to build it. Uh, the the um, board chose not to take option number one. Number two is to go to TCS, which is Kevin is here, and I'll let him speak in just a second, which is the uh, Tennessee Municipal Bond Fund and the Tennessee County Services Loan Program. Or the board could go to the open market. They could go to Pinnacle or whoever and borrow the money. Really one of the cool things about going through TCS is that it's much lower rate because they do work with governments throughout the state. And this would be set up on a 15 year loan and it would be structured, it's a fixed rate loan, and structured as a draw loan, which you couldn't get at Pinnacle or anywhere else. Uh, we thought about maybe using the ARPA funds. Uh, Lisa and I had talked about that, but I think we're gonna be using those in some other location because ARPA uh, does say that daycare and child care is eligible, but we, the board voted last Thursday uh, to move forward uh, with Tennessee County Services Loan Program. Um, Kevin, I'll let you speak just a moment about the program and how it would actually work. You'll see that, that uh, based on the projections that's, that's on your um, uh, SharePoint, that it's cash flowing on, by year three based on, on um, 
the number of kids and, and uh, what we would anticipate. It's really a cool idea because we don't have to build a kitchen, a stainless steel kitchen. We already have one. They would cook it in the nursing home, put it on the cart, bring it over to the kids uh, for the meals as they stay there. Uh, you've got nurses already on the premises. Uh, it's just a, it's a great idea. Kevin. And thank you, Chairman P, members of the committee. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Senator Ketcher. I, I did it again. So, <laughs> so as, as Mayor Ketron said, you know, he and I have worked together on a number of things throughout the years, and I just appreciate the opportunity to appear before the commission today and talk about uh, the Tennessee County Services Loan Program and the Tennessee Municipal Bond Fund. I'll, I'll use the two kind of interchangeably because we're essentially one and the same. Um, and with me today, I'd also like to recognize Marty Spears, uh, from, uh, formerly from CTAS. Many of you may have met him in a previous life, but we were lucky enough to poach him from CTAS and bring him over to work with us at the County Services Loan Program. Uh, the County Services Loan Program and the Municipal Bond Fund were created as simply an alternative method for local governments to borrow money. Um, we're governed by a nonprofit board of directors. We are a nonprofit that's governed by a board of directors that's composed of city and county officials. Um, so you could say that we are directly beholden to you because if there's anything that we do that does anything untoward to any of our cities or counties, we will hear, for, hear from our board and it will be um, the first thing that I get reported to me. Um, but both programs were, or the programs were created in 1986, and over the past 36 years, we've closed 1,657 loans, totaling just a tick under $5 billion in total lending volume. We've worked with 221 different cities and 74 counties. Um, Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Rutherford County uh, has not been a county that we have worked with yet, so I appreciate the opportunity to talk about the program today. Um, loan size ranging from $4,500 all the way up to $68 million, so we try to adhere to our motto of any loan, any size, no, bit, no, no loan's too big, no loan is too small. Um, so we operate three different loan programs that have collectively saved local governments about $709 million in documented interest costs. Our three programs are the alternative loan program, which is traditional capital outlay notes, uh, grant anticipation notes, bond anticipation notes, things like that that many governments uh, utilize on a daily basis. Uh, we have offered, or in our past, we've offered a variable rate loan program, and we still offer one today. Um, but recently, we have added um, a fixed rate draw loan program, which I'm happy to discuss with you, which is what the mayor and the uh, community care have discussed uh, in prior meeting. So how do we do this? Well, um, there's a, something that'll be confusing. You probably noticed from your, uh, your packet in the SharePoint is there's something in there called the Public Building Authority of the City of Clarksville. So effectively under state law, um, there are three ways that you can borrow money. You can issue notes on your own any day of the week. Um, if, if you adhere with, of course, state law requirements, uh, you can hire a financial advisor and issue bonds at market, um, as, as the mayor alluded to. And then there's a third way, which is entering into a loan agreement with a public building authority. Authority. Um, most public building authorities in the state, as, as uh, I believe you guys have discussed with uh, yours in just a, a very recent agenda item, uh, most of them are simply set up to administer public buildings or administer contracts for construction of public buildings. We operate the city, the city of Clarksville's Public Building Authority and the Montgomery County Public Building Authority, and all that they are set up to do is to be a conduit issuer to enter into loan agreements with local governments. Um, that was the sole purpose of their creation, and that is we are the administrator and the staff of those public building authorities. Um, so. What we understand today is that the community care uh, of Rutherford County daycare facility will cost about $4 million to build. Um, what we are able to offer and happy to offer um, as, we've, as we've improved our program over the years is a 15-year fixed rate, fixed to term loan. Um, and that loan would be placed on a draw basis, as the mayor alluded to. So what that means is um, when we first started the process and I met with community care, uh, interest rates at the time were uh, 2.72%, um, but as, as um, Mr. Beatty said in his comments earlier, unfortunately interest rates have gone up, so they're a little bit higher now. Um, we, do, we haven't obtained a quote today because the way our process will work is that um, we are able to present a rate to the commission on the day of voting, and should the commission approve, that rate will be locked in 
through closing. So it takes kind of the guessing game out of it on the back end of, okay, we, we know we want to borrow money, but we don't know what the rate's going to be 60, 90 days down the road when we actually get around to the process. Um, so when, rates, when, when this whole process began, 2.72% um, was the interest rate. And uh, the way our draw program would work is, say construction of that uh, building took two years, two years from start to finish, and you made even draws over that two-year period. So based on level amortization, your interest cost over those first two years, if you had the money deposited into your account on day one, would be about $208,000. Um, if you're drawing the proceeds and only paying interest on the amount outstanding, so um, you know the first year you may, might have 100,000 the first month, another 200,000 for 300,000 outstanding after month two. Um, but if you did equal, equal draws over the 24 month period, your interest cost would be cut in half. So that 208 would become 104,000. Um, so what we are able to do once this loan is closed, since the city or the county would like to the option to generate revenue, as um, I, I know the mayor discussed, uh, there's a lot of interest in this facility, and there might be some fees that come in off of this building um, for daycare services. So. Yeah, to the extent that you have additional revenue, um, our loans are structured in a way where you can make additional principal payments. We were created because we understood that no one wanted to be in debt longer than they had to be or borrow more than they needed to borrow. So our program was prided and created on flexibility. Um, so after the fifth year, if you have additional revenues coming in uh, uh, by, you know, the profitability of the center, then you can just simply notify us, hey, we want to make a, another principal payment of X hundred thousand dollars or whatever you'd like to do. Helps you get out of debt faster on the loan, and it also reduces ongoing interest costs, because if you, you know, pay an extra hundred thousand, your outstanding balance, of course, will be down the whole time. Um, so we understand kind of the procedures and, and how uh, we work with you as, a, as the county. Uh, we understand that the borrowing process is a very infrequent part of any elected official's responsibilities. So we try to make our process as easy as possible. Um, we have in-house staff that prepares all necessary resolutions and ensures compliance with all state and federal laws. We prepare all documents and get all necessary state approvals prior to our loan ever being closed. Um, we also run all traps and get bank approvals for you. Simple, you know, the banks, the, we work on private placements, so we're placing all loans directly with the bank. Um, so it would be a simple application and a simple approval process. Um, after the rate close, or after the loan closes, what we do is we ensure all invoices are properly billed, um, since it will be on a draw basis and you won't adhere to the amortization schedule, at least initially as you're drawing down the funds. Um, we want to facilitate the draw transfers and also make sure that your money's available in a timely process. So all of these items are included in our closing costs and our administrative fee, how, how the bond fund gets paid. So the closing costs on our loans are, are a flat 0.6%. Uh, of the total loan amount. So in this ex instance, it would be $24,000 on a $4 million loan. So in addition to that, um, how our program uh, co gets compensated is a 0.15% fee on the outstanding balance of all of our loans. This is paid by banks that participate in our program. It's not an additional expense that has occurred at the county level. Um, so years ago, and how we chose this compensation structure, is because our board and our CEO at the time wanted to ensure a long-term relationship with our communities. So we decided that in order to ensure your ongoing satisfaction that we would place a portion of our compensation at risk. Um, so that's why we're gonna do everything to strive to make sure that you're satisfied and that you are um, not lifting a heavy burden throughout the entire process and that you simply just have a wonderful facility that can serve as a great asset to your community at the end of the day. Um, but in closing, I just wanted to thank you guys very much for the opportunity to discuss the program. And um, if it pleases the chair, I'll remain around for uh, questions or any other uh, comments that you guys might have directed towards me. Any questions for Kevin? I do. Commissioner Pearson. Mr. Pearson. The, the 6% interest on the $4 million is how much? Uh, zero point six, so sixty basis points. Zero point yeah, six. Yeah, that's it's not six percent. Correct, sir. Yes, zero point six. That's twenty-four thousand. Yes, sir. 
Okay. I want to be clear in my understanding is that I know you said it's like the airport authority, but TCA has statutes that authorize airport authorities to borrow money. I don't, unless you know whether or not they, uh, our community care board has the authority to incur debt. So, my my understanding is community care is a is a component unit of. It is a component unit. Yeah. So, so for y'all. It's debt of the county. That's what, I mean, I, it's not debt of community care. It is debt of the county. Correct. So it is a different mechanism to borrow money. That is an option. The other option, because, you know, I, I don't want to throw any wrinkles, but we could do it faster as well if this is the, what the, if it is, the county's expectation to borrow money for a project for building the daycare. There's no different, four million is just to add on for us the next time we go to market. If you wanted to do it, we could do a, a, what we've done before is an internal note, borrow it ourselves, roll that debt into the next time we issue debt. I mean, that's, that is an option as well. I understood that it was community care was going to do the debt. Well, like I said, there's three different options. We can go to Pinnacle or whoever and borrow that. Uh, you're going to end up owning the building anyway, uh, as everything out there belongs to the county. So, um, so, so bottom line, it is debt of the county, and the then CCRC wants to make the payments. So we need, we would need agreements with CCRC, the county, to CCRC, that they will make hey. payments. So I think that's, that that's an agreement that, that needs that's to happen. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Are there any other questions from the committee, Commissioner Stevens? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On that interfund capital outlay note, like if we borrow from ourselves, can we charge community care interest on that? Uh, it, you could. I mean, within this agreement to community care, this is how much you are expecting them to pay us back. No different from when we, you know, we borrowed money and we got into agreements with um, across the street, state, the state on their leasing that property. Uh, um, yes. I mean, to me, that's the agreements that need to happen is that community care will pay the county because the debt is going to be in the county's name. We're borrowing for this purpose. If we borrow from our own fund, though, we, right. from well, the debt I'm service just fund. That that's a mechanism. We go to market, uh, I mean, we go to market every year. This was $4 million wrapped into another, the next time we go is, now it's just going to be added in. That that we could achieve it. I would like to get with Sam on saying, is would we achieve a better rate to, to do this project? But if we keep it in house the whole time, would we even have to put it on another bond issue? Now you get. So you're saying that we just hold the debt. I have to think about this. It would be like us, or oh no, we're gonna have to, I, I don't know if, the times that we have lent money to the airport authority, we've used internal money, not debt service money. Talking about from the general fund. Yeah. Is the airport authority making payments back to the general fund? Yes, but there were agreements. The other way, the last two times we did it, we borrowed money on behalf of them. And then we entered into agreement. It was done at the same time. Because airport authorities can issue debt, we bought their debt. So, yeah, I think the I last mean, two times it was they issued a revenue note and we bought that note and that's right. how we received the payment essentially. Right. Yeah. 
but we had a note before then, before those two, but I think we used general fund to fund it to give them the money. Right. I don't think I'm allowed to use debt service money to create money to make a note. Right. That's when we get, that's when I think we, I, we need attorneys to figure that piece out. So did your, did the community care board mayor all look at the different funding mechanisms and they recommended this or? <coughs> to the best of my explanation to them, I told them that because they are a 501c3, but they're not a 501c3, what are they? No, I'm saying oh. they, I don't know that that entity, he's not gonna lend money to the 501c3. Right. It would be our debt. It's, that's uh, what I'm saying. It's the county's debt. Yeah, using, using our um, credit, I guess. It's, it's us borrowing the money. It's the county that, borrowing the money. That, that's correct. And then another agreement to community care that they will pay, they will pay for the debt. They will, pay, they will the debt. pay the principal and interest. Of course, if they don't, we're still we would have to pay because it's the county's debt. Sure, and it's gonna be the county's building as well, so. Right, right, so. Well, well let me try to clear away a little of this, or at least in my mind, so I've got it straight. We've actually got two questions here. One is, do we want to build this facility? And if we do, you know, uh, the repayment, you know, evidently it's gonna be our debt. So then the second question is, how are we gonna fund it? We can do it internally, or we can go out outside agencies to borrow, or we could go to bond issue. So, I mean, I, that, to me, that's what's in front of us. Am I mistaken, or do y'all concur that's what we're looking at? I see yeah, it. I, yeah, I, I totally agree, Mr. Chairman, that, you know, this is a, it's, it's an opportunity that the, I don't think Community Care Board really cares. They just said, we want to step up and pay. We feel like that we can make the payments to pay for this instead of putting it, letting the county incur that debt. As far as the mechanism of how it's worked out, they really didn't care. Uh, they just want to make the payment and then at some point in time when it starts making a real profit, they want to pay off the note and then from that point forward, start taking profits and putting back into the nursing facility itself to continue to improve the, the facility itself. Um, whether it be a new roof, which I think is gonna be coming up, et cetera. Um, but it, they, they firmly believe that, that it is a, a retention tool for the county employees uh, to offer this service. They also feel that it's a recruiting tool for county employees. I mean, there's not another uh, county that can offer a service like this for their employees. Um, you know, when you're trying to recruit somebody, you can say, hey, we, we got a real nice daycare facility with a certified tornado shelter, and it's below market of what you're gonna be paying. It's a great opportunity for our, our employees. So that's before us, Mr. Chairman. Kevin? Please, thank you. Um, so, uh, so one thing, just to kind of clear up one thing of it, yeah, so the, the debt would be a general obligation debt of the county. Um, it'd be, this isn't too dissimilar from a loan that we did with the bi-county solid waste company or facility that's uh, a part of Montgomery County. Um, so they borrowed very similar, $4.56 million for multiple projects around Bi-County Solid Waste. We bill them directly. Um, effectively, it's just the county's pledging their general obligation as a backstop in the event that revenues are insufficient for Bi-County to make the payment, or in this case, it would be community care to make the payment. So that's, that's effectively how it would be structure yeah. okay you guys have heard the presentation here and I don't know whether to break this down and say hey vote on first whether to accept the project and then look at the funding or I, I'd like comments from the committee any suggestions Commissioner my suggestion would be Lisa what will be the most prudent way that we can accomplish this project Okay, for me, to me, it would be that you are accepting that that you 
do want to do the project. Yes, it's almost like the school board wants to come and build a school. That you agree that they, you're going to allow them to do that. That you wholly support building that. That's, that's number one. Number two is how are we going to fund it? So there's three things we talked about tonight. Loan program, that's a loan program. We wrap it up into another debt issue when you know, we talked about before the schools are coming up, we wrap it up in that one. The third one is to allocate $4 million out of the ARPA money. Do it that way. And, and then have, and then enter into an agreement. Right. With if, or if, if the full commission chooses not to go that direction, then, then community care would say, the board said, we still want to do this project that's on your property. Will you allow us to build this building on your property and we pay for it? And then sign it over to you after we build it. Uh, and they go to the outside loan, uh, the Pinnacle Bank or whoever, and, and build the building to, to get them out of that double wide. Right, uh, well the question would be, does the board have the authority to enter into debt? Does the community care, board. community care board have the authority, the statutory authority, to enter into debt? That's the that is my question. Okay. Again, to try to clear this up, I'm I'm going to ask for a motion whether we want to do this project or not. I want to start with that, and then we'll start talking about funding. Uh, so, I would like to discuss Commissioner Stevens. I don't know if I'm for or against it until I know how we're going to pay for it. I don't want to say yes, I want to do it, and then find out, you know, later it's not something I want to do because the way we thought we were going to pay for it isn't available. Well, let me ask you this: Could we uh, tentatively agree uh, or disagree to go ahead and build this, depending upon uh, contingent upon how it's funded? I'd like to see the difference between, you know, his his rates and. Of course, it's a moving target if we go to bond. Of course, we know we've got monies that we could loan to use ourselves and then turn around and say charge community care. We could do that. We could do we that. We could wrap up that, that, that revenue loss money. <laughs> you know, I keep using the revenue loss money, but if we can account for it there and you say we're going to use that to lend to or to build this and then set up a payment schedule. That, that, that's where I was kind of going, was using the, the missing revenue money. Uh, can we do this like in a week or two before the final commission meeting of the budget year so we can get answers to all these questions first? I just feel very uncomfortable voting for something with all the loose ends out there. I personally would like clarification on whether they can borrow their own money, can we loan money from within to them and charge them interest. I, I want to know the answers to all this before I say, yes, let's do this. I, I'm not opposed to the project, but I just want to know how we're going to pay for it first before I say I want to do it. Let's see, when's, when's our next meeting, Lisa? We still have Our next meeting? Budget committee's next yes. meeting would be Tuesday night is the um, hearing. public hearing and the 15th Wednesday night is the meeting to discuss the public hearing, which would be a regular. What's the date on that? Just 15th. 15th. Does that give you time to talk to Sam? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I already know that, that it could be wrapped up. And if it's something that we want to do it right now, and see, that's the other thing, Mayor. <clears throat> Who is going to be in charge of the building? It is going to be our building. Who's who's signing the contract to build the building, going to be PBA going to do this project, you know, that whole piece of it. Property management could say, uh, give it to PBA uh, and send it to them, or they can go and put it out to bid and go direct. Like the county, the, yeah. the mayor's office could bid it out. Correct. It's something Again, if it's something that absolutely want to do it and we want to start right now and we want to get those bids out, we could do an internal note from the debt service over to the capital and pay back later at a later 
and pay it back later, like we've done before with their schools. Sure. But we could do that next meeting. I think Johnson and Bailey, the architect, I, th I think they're just about done. They're complete with their, their architectural uh, design and engineering. And uh, I think you said community care was paying it directly. That's correct. Okay. But the uh, construction piece of it. That, correct. Is um, and all the utilities are there on site. Uh, water, sewer, gas, etc. So it's not like they're having any delays. They're they're ready to get going. Two-year uh, construction estimated construction time, depending on on um, the supply chain, uh, what they're estimating. Okay, so I'm hearing concerns about how making a decision on how, and then getting a couple of loose ends tied up, and maybe looking at this again at our next meeting, which would be the public hearing, I suggest that we would do it on the day after where we review the public hearing. Uh, do I hear a motion one way or the other, whether to continue now or put this off to our next meeting so we get some of these questions answered? Commissioner, we would also have a meeting on the 22nd, which would be our meeting prior to the 27th commission meeting. Next two Wednesdays are budget committee meetings also. So the 16th or the 22nd? 15th or the 22nd. Oh, 15th was the public hearing. And 15th, uh, 14th is the public hearing. 15th is our meeting to right. discuss the public hearing. And the 22nd is also a budget committee meeting. Okay, so we've got those options. Commissioner Stevens. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll make a motion that we defer this item until the June 22nd meeting so we have time to get answers to all our questions. All right, I have a motion. Do I hear a second? second. And a second. Any further discussion? One question. So what is the cheapest way to finance this for, for the community care? In other words, the cheapest, the cheapest way, I mean, the cheapest way is not have any debt expense. The interest, if this is something, if you think about it, it's a building and we're going to give it to not give it. It is, it is a building that you're getting ready to build to be able to have this daycare. The cheapest way is to use the ARPA money and not borrow it and then you can you can set I'm sure that that um, community care on their performa have come up with some kind of interest but if they can have a facility that they don't have to pay okay so rent, but, but do, do we cheapest, know if if, the, if, if, if that's qualified under so two two things one the monies that we are using and the part of the the part of the ARPA money that we're using that that we're building the health and safety buildings that that is a qualified expense so is a daycare but we could use it we could use it that way use those funds for that it's still not borrowing I mean we're not the county is not incurring debt like we're not incurring debt on these buildings. The other way is the revenue loss. I mean, if there's any questions like, well, I really don't know about that, we really need that. You still have revenue loss money that you could use, and then it's like it. There's really no question. So one of the answers to the question I hope we have is, can the community care board borrow money themselves? On themselves. And we don't, themselves. We don't know the answer to that question yet. No, and I'll be happy to go back to Evan Cope, the CC, CCRC attorney, and ask him to check that for us. Uh, I'm calling tomorrow. I guess you could go back to the board and say, hey, we'd like, uh, we, we want to take $4 million of the $5 million. We got an ending fund balance and just pay for it. You know, I guess they have that authority. They have that authority. They have that authority. You know, to spend their own money. Uh, but whether they have the authority to borrow, I don't know. I don't either. Yeah, we'll, we can find out. Okay, we have a motion on Thank the you, floor Kevin. and a second. Thank you, sir. Is there any further discussion or questions? Oh, uh, Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. 
Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. We'll be revisiting this on the 22nd. The next is uh, item 20, general fund budget amendment for unemployment. This is our routine end of year estimate. It, our unemployment it is just like our employee health insurance bucket. We're never sure where we're going to be off unemployment. We're never sure which department is going to use it. And this is our best estimate at this date to uh, pull $3,240 out of the employee benefits unemployment to put in the various lines. So we've got 690 for the county mayor, 400 for county buildings, 690 for domestic violence, uh, 1,360 for jail, and $100 for correctional work center. Okay, you've heard this cleanup item. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Thank you. Okay, call roll, please. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Next item is dead stock removal contract. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll take that. Um, <clears throat> I received a letter from Mr. Jerry Mansfield who is the executive director for South Central Development District down in Mount Pleasant, Tennessee, stating that the company that we have been uh, using for decades here in Rutherford County to pick up our dead stock, um, which means anything over 75 pounds, I believe, uh, horses, cows, et cetera, um, that when the farmer or the owner calls, then they'll come pick it up and the company had been doing it for 70 something years and they chose, they thought they were at the end of the line and they didn't want to do it anymore. We were all in a panic. Mr. Mansfield worked uh, um, around the clock just about to pull things together. Um, the, we had to send a letter of intent along with all the other counties that were at, actually using uh, this company. Uh, the letter of intent is that we would pay on behalf of the county um, and the other counties did as well. And then that qualified um, South Central Development District with our letters of intent to get a grant from Department of Ag to help pick these up, um, these dead animals. So just within the last week or so, this we got approval and um, every, everything is good to go. So this will be a 12 month contract starting uh, July 1st, 2022. Um, and we will have to sign off on it that we're, we will uh, participate. And, and uh, I think in the sum of $42,937 that we will pay the district one lump sum consisting of the balance of the contract, half of the contractual sum upon uh, execution of the agreement. It's anything over 75 pounds. Now, anything outside of that, roadkill, deer, et cetera, there's another company that um, we're still working on. The one in Lebanon has chosen, I mean, excuse me, one in Laverne has chosen not to come pick up uh, our roadkill. Um, so we're still working on that. They had an incinerator in Laverne. They would pick up all those animals. But this is on large, large animals. You can't bury it on your, on your uh, farm uh, when it dies. It, it, there's restrictions in there that it has to be within so many feet of the road where they come pick it up. And they promise to pick it up within <laughs> in 48 hours from the time that the call comes in. Mr. Johnson. Mayor, this is just a basic contract that we have had in years past. Yeah, it's there's, just there's no the way, change in law. It's, it's just the way it's configured now. It's it, the same thing's going to occur. It's just not with the same company. All right. Motion to approve this. I hear a motion to approve. I'll make a second. I do have one observation, though. Um, 
in the bullet point number one where it talks about how we're going to pay, if we're going to pay in full, this it probably doesn't matter, but this is just a, I'm sure it's probably just a typo, but it says that if we're going to pay um, in two halves, the second half it says is to be paid on or before April 1, 2022, which predates the agreement, which is July 1, 2022. So this probably just needs to be changed to 23. Okay. We've already got this amount in next year's budget too. Mr. Piercy. Is there any way to change the designation of where they wind up? I don't believe so, no sir. Cedar Crest and Middle Point. That's what it says here. Lewisburg. Chairman, I do have a follow-up question. I had the same just curious moment. Is there a reason they don't cremate these animals? Do we know? I'm sorry? Is there a reason that they don't cremate these animals, do we know? Let me ask for a suspension of the rose. Uh, Commissioner Pettis Reed sat back there shaking his head. Would you like to speak on this, Pettis? He, he can't answer that question for you. It's, and since this is part of our discussion, I'm going to ask him to come up. The process in that has... Uh, uh, I heard your discussion, I think, a few weeks ago when you were talking about this, and while you were doing that, I was calling several UT specialists on this because they've been doing a study on this on large animals as far as uh, the disposal of them and whatever because they knew some of these things were getting ready to happen. But uh, to incinerate an animal, it's not very effective as far as fuel cost, especially this day and time. Uh, you know, you've always heard, you know, he has enough money to, bur uh, to burn a wet mule. Well, that's a lot of money. And to today, to burn a large animal, it would take a really large incinerator to do that. Now, you're looking at counties like Giles County, who's involved in this. They have over 1,100 animals a year at Giles County. We've had as many as 500 here in Rutherford County that have had to go to these facilities. So they are now using two landfills and the reason for that is they don't know as far as what the situation we're dealing with here, they don't know which one to go to there, but they're operating where the one is the closest. So that's how they're doing that. And I think there are 10 counties in there, Mayor, that's involved yes, in this. They, they were having problems with one county, but there are 10 counties that have done this and they've done this for all these years. But uh, they've tried several different processes for doing this. The fastest way and the, e the easiest way to do this is by composing. But the only thing is it takes a large area to do that and to do that many animals. And it takes a lot of compost uh, to do it too. But uh, they'll compost within two weeks and they'll, uh, they'll go completely away. Uh, I've heard some people say about burial. Whenever you bury an animal, they do not decompose. And in, fa in fact, they will leach into the water system. And that's why they do not want to do that. This grant that we're getting is coming through the um, groundwater uh, program that we have to prevent this. And that's why they're going to continue it and give us the grant in this, uh, this program. That answered the questions committee had. Mr. Reed, thank you. Uh, you've heard the discussion, and we got we do have a motion and a second on this. Yes. No, I, I think we've got. Yes. We've got it. Any further discussion? The only thing I want to add, uh, being a country boy, is you don't want to be anywhere near a dead large animal. And it's pretty vital that we get these picked up in our community quickly. Uh, having said that. Any further discussion? Call roll, Mark. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Pearson? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, item 22, data share agreement with Tennessee Housing Development Agency and Home. This one. We are we will be winding down our emergency rental assistance. Um, we're not asking for more money. We're, we are going to wind it down. Um, the expectation today 
is that we will, and we'll be putting this news out more than now um, between target date is June 30th. We will still be paying out past that date. But after that date, our citizens will still be able, who needs this um, assistance, they would just go directly to Tennessee Housing Development, THDA, they will be going to there. So a lot of these, um, this program will only cover 15 months of rental assistance. It's the same program that the state is doing. They're gonna take, they're gonna take up where we leave off, but they have to make sure that they are not giving people a double benefit. So this agreement is between THDA, Rutherford County, and Horn. Horn is our third party that we use to administer that program, that they have the data. Um, to, to, you know, they will look at our data to make sure that they're not duplicating benefits. This is a draft. Um, THDA pretty much just wants wanted information, feedback on how does this agreement work for them. They're doing it to all the other uh, governments in the ten in state, thinking that they're going to be taking those over. I chose to go ahead and give it to you because between now and our next meeting, I hope to have that this is done. They don't want to wait till August, so either at our full commission this time or full commission at the next time, I hope to have the agreement where everybody has blessed it. So that's why it is draft, and Nick did look at it for his, his review, but THD may change it when we're ready to give it to you. I hear you have, you've heard. It's been a great program, Mr. Chair. C committee, any comments? If not, I'll entertain a motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Second. And a second, Commissioner Gooch. Is there any discussion on this? Call roll, Mark. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes, motion carries. Uh, other business, there is some, but there may be something I'm not aware of. Mayor? We've got this budget amendment that we kind of alluded to during Ed's. Um, this, this budget agreement. It's on your desk. Chairman, it's from OIT. It came in late this afternoon. It's um, requesting 23200 moving it from... It's the pooled amount that we had for employee insurance that we're not going to use. That we're not going to use. So pulling it out of one light item, that 205, I guess, employee benefits and putting it into 317 out of processing services. Okay, you've heard the request. The amendment is requested to provide funds to enhance the county's computer security over its data processing functions. And basically, this is um, a firewall that would be, um, that would help from cyber attacks. Any discussion or questions, Commissioner? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve and a second from Commissioner Piercy. Any further discussion? Call roll, please, Mark. Mr. Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Mr. Dodd? Yes. Mr. Gooch? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner P? <coughs> motion carries. Uh, you don't have anything else on their other business. Now, couple things. I, I want to call us into recess and the reason I want to do that is we're going to discuss uh, the uh, offers that we have for a new financial uh, director. And what we found is when we broadcast live, we don't have much negotiating power if we actually put out how much money we would offer. and. 
of course, we have to have a public meeting in which to do that, what we're basically going to do is we will continue recording, but we will not air that part of the meeting. It can be requested. It's public records. We're not trying to hide anything from anybody, but we're trying to uh, make the best use of the county's finances. So I'm going to call us into recess at this time. We will meet together again in room 205. It's a little easier there. But for right now, instead of calling in recess, I want to call for a short break, and then we'll go to recess. We're, we're, we're going to take a break for a minute right now. Five minutes, and then we'll reconvene. Let's reconvene here, and then we'll move. Yes, five minutes here. <laughs>